everybody, it's TJ here. Welcome to another episode of Smash Ultimate Countdown, the show where we count down the days of the release of Super Smash Bros. Ultimate for Nintendo Switch on December 7th. The final Smash Direct has come and gone. We know probably as much as we're going to learn about this game prior to its release, which, by the way, is super close. You see that number up there? Even though it's not likely that we'll be hit with too many surprises from here on out, Nintendo is continuing to update the Smash blog on SmashBrothers.com. So I'm here to help you count down those final days by breaking down the blog, including the characters, stages, items, music, and modes. I'll add in a little hearty helping of my own personal experiences and opinions. And of course, my favorite part of the show, I want to invite you to leave your opinions in the comment section below about anything that we cover in today's episode. And if there's a Smash Brothers related topic that we haven't addressed here on the show and you want to talk about it, you can let me know that in the comment section as well. Let's get started. The first entry on the Smash blog for this week is a character highlight for the reigning video game champion of the world, Little Mac. Little Mac is not only one of my favorite Nintendo characters, he's just one of my favorite characters in general across all medium. Along with the original Legend of Zelda, Mike Tyson's Punch-Out is one of the first video games that I really developed a strong connection to. It was very easy for me as a little boy to identify with Little Mac. True to his name, he's very diminutive of stature, and he would boldly face off against these just monsters in the ring. I know it's a video game, but it had a really strong symbolic impression on my life. Little Mac was so small in proportion to the obstacles that he faced in the ring, but that didn't stop him. He just kept swinging and swinging and swinging until he finally overcame that obstacle, and then he moved on to an even more difficult challenge. Isn't that what life is like? It, it doesn't matter what is going on in your life. I'm talking to you and you and you. There is something in your life right now that is challenging you. You might look at that obstacle and think, how am I ever going to get past this? It might be a career issue, a financial issue, a relationship issue, family drama. You might be battling your own personal demons, but you get past that. You will get past that only to walk headlong into the next challenge. But because you overcame the previous challenge in the last round, you're stronger, you're better, your skills are refined, and you are more prepared to be able to handle this next seemingly insurmountable challenge. But mark my words, you'll get past that one too. And Little Mac is a symbol of that. He's an icon of perseverance. Chances are you've probably gone toe to toe with Glass Joe. And even knowing nothing about the game, he's easy to topple. The first real challenge for me came in the form of King Hippo. He blocks everything and he only has one weak spot which is kind of one of the cool hallmarks of the punch out series each opponent has their own tell their own fighting pattern and style and their own weakness the thing is some characters you can kind of fight around their weakness even if you couldn't identify it but king hippo you had to get him only one way and it didn't seem like i could ever beat him and then when i finally figured out the trick and beat him i felt like i'd beat the whole game only to walk right into a whole host of other really challenging fighters the next real hurdle for me became bald bull i must have fought bald bull a million times until i accidentally figured out that if you sucker punch him in the gut while he's going for his bull charge it's like an instant KO. But a lot of those little things in Punch-Out, you had to figure out. And then you overcome him and you think, the world is your oyster, nothing can stop me now. Until you come toe-to-toe -to -toe with Mike Tyson. The man is a real-life boxing phenom. I follow the world of competitive sports and watching Mike Tyson fight. In his prime at the time when this game came out, there really wasn't a fighter like Iron Mike before or since. And Mike Tyson's punch out is kind of like a time capsule to permanently preserve that time in sports history in our memory. I fought Mike Tyson a million bajillion times and I eventually did beat him, although I will admit I made liberal and frequent use of safe states. When Little Mac was first announced as a new challenger for Smash Brothers for Wii U and 3DS, I think I turned a literal backflip. Alongside Link, this kid was my hero. And for the first time in my personal Smash history, I was actually torn between which character I thought I might main. Turns out that wound up being a moot point once Nintendo announced I could play as the me fighter, the only character cooler than Link and Little Mac is me. So without a doubt, Nintendo allowing me to play as myself definitely took away from time I would have dedicated to developing a good game with Little Mac. And in all honesty, there is really no excuse for Little Mac not appearing in every version of Smash. He's Nintendo's only first party fighting game character. He absolutely should have been in Smash 64. But Mr. Sakurai made up for it by giving us this amazing version of the character based on his Wii outing, which I just think is a tremendous game. I loved the the original Punch-Out, not so much Super Punch-Out. I don't know, the feeling was just a little bit different. Don't get me wrong, it's still a great game. But I think Punch-Out for Wii is the best of the three. It takes everything that I love and remember about the original one and just amplifies it. These characters are incredible caricatures. They're fun and funny and challenging. And it's my favorite version of Little Mac to date as well. And that's the version of Little Mac that we see in Smash Brothers. He is a high risk, 
high reward character. Unmatched in a toe-to-toe -to -toe ground game, but needless to say, his recovery leaves more than a little something to be desired. He also comes fully equipped with his Star Punch, a callback to his own game. When his star meter fills up, you can unload a super epic uppercut punch that almost always deals a knockout. For Little Mac's final smash, he turns into Gigamac. Gigamac is basically a hulked out Mac. He comes from the two-player mode for the Wii version, where a second player can come in and assume the identity of Mac in his beefed up Giga form. It really is the perfect final smash. I'm sure you can tell I'm super excited about Little Mac, and I'm really looking forward to spending more time in the ring in Smash Bros. Ultimate. The next entry on the Smash blog is our music sample for the week, this time it's Seascape from Splatoon. If you know me, you know I'm not much of a Splatoon player, but one thing I've always praised the series for is their colorful and creative character design, and their fresh, catchy tunes. In my humble opinion, this Smash remix certainly honors the fresh sounds of the series. The description describes it as a little bit more relaxed, but I could definitely see myself punching somebody in the face to this track. <laughs> when you're done here, you can give it a listen at smashbrothers.com under the music tab. Rejoice, Pokemon fans! Not only does Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee release today, but a Pokemon stage that has not graced the Smash scene for over 10 years makes its way back in Ultimate. I'm talking about the Pokemon Stadium. Now, there is also a Pokemon Stadium 2 that was playable as recently as Smash 4, but for some of you new Smashers, you're going to get to give the original a go. This is one of those stages that evolves while you're on it, and it changes between four different themes. It has fire, water, rock, and grass variations, covering some of your main Pokemon type variations right there. Smash Ultimate features the largest collection of Pokemon characters in any Smash Brothers game so far, so it's nice to give them another home stage. I think the stage is great, though I probably prefer the sequel. Let me know in the comment section below which one you like better. We've got an assist trophy! Akira from Virtua Fighter. Virtua Fighter came out in 1993, and it is the first fully polygonal 3D fighter ever made, I'm pretty sure. The graphics are really a sign of their times, and like any game as the Virtua Fighter series progressed, the graphics became more modernized. But the representation of Akira in Smash Brothers is a callback all the way to the first iteration of the game. I remember seeing Virtua Fighter for the first time in an arcade cabinet, and being just wowed at the characters moving not only left and right, but also on a 3D axis. It added literally a whole nother dimension to the game. It was surprisingly intuitive to move on a whole new axis, and it was clear to me that this was a game changer. It really revolutionized the way you can interact with your space in a fighting game. At the time, I thought it was likely that all fighting games would eventually go this route, though to be honest, I've always preferred 2D fighters myself. Akira has all kind of cool moves he can come in and wreak havoc upon the competition should you release him from his assist trophy, including some of his signature moves. And the Smash Blog also points out a little bit of extra trivia that I didn't know. Bayonetta's throw is based on off of one of Akira's moves. Next up, we get another look at Spirits Mode. Every week I get more and more excited about Spirits. For this entry, they're highlighting the primary Spirits Type Triangle. We've got four different types. Attack, Shield, and Grab. Attack has an advantage over Grab, Grab has an advantage over Shield, and Shield has an advantage over Attack. That's kind of how the Weapons Triangle works. I'm sure you know that by now. And then there's Neutral, which does not enjoy any particular advantage, but also does not suffer from any weaknesses. So not only do you have these cool new tools in your arsenal to boost your character in any one of these directions, you also need to consider equipping spirits that are powerful against your opponent's spirits. This is like your basic rock, paper, scissors mechanic, and generally this always works against me because I find a type that I like and I just stick with it. So I'm just gonna load all my characters up with attack spirits. There, now you all know how to beat me. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know at this point what spirit type lends itself best to your playstyle? What's next on the Smash blog but another character overview? We've got a Kirby character on our hands. My favorite Kirby character, in fact, Meta Knight. Now, I don't want to spoil anything for you, but if you've ever seen behind Meta Knight's mask, he actually looks a lot like Kirby. He's basically a blue looking Kirby. So part of the appeal to me is that you have this dichotomy of two characters that are remarkably similar, and where Kirby leans into his cuteness, Meta Knight really plays against it. I love how his design makes the most out of a menacing beach ball, essentially. His sword is sweet, his mask is haunting, his draconic wings and armor are awesome. He's pretty much the baddest dude in the whole Kirby universe, if you ask me. He's so bad, in fact, in Smash Brothers Brawl, he got straight up banned from competition. Maybe his recovery was a little too epic. That said, recovery is still one of the principal attributes of this character. All of his moves are centered around recovery. This character's got a whole lot of style. And while it's unfortunate that he can't be used in competition for some of the previous Smash games, it does raise a pretty interesting topic of discussion where Smash Brothers is concerned, and that is post-game balancing. Nintendo 
was famous for delivering some of the most polished final products of all gaming companies out there. But even then, until you really dig into the metagame, it's hard to see if there are any glaring flaws or omissions or if some characters are accidentally OP. And now that there are some like 80 plus characters going to be added to this game by the time we're all said and done, making sure that every one of them is on equal footing with each other is nigh impossible. So I love the fact that Mr. Sakurai can go in and tweak things here and there to try to maintain the most refined sense of balance possible. What do you think? When a game is released, should it be done? Or do you like the fact that developers can go in after the game is released and fine tune some of the details to optimize performance, balance the gaming mechanics, or enhance the experience in some way? I think it's amazing. Truly one of the triumphs of our modern era. I imagine we'll probably be seeing minor Smash Brothers tweaks for years to come, especially since we can already count on having new DLC characters added, and it's hard to predict all the different contingencies and how that's going to affect the base cast of characters. I look forward to your thoughts. And then the last thing I want to mention is Nintendo released a new trailer for the game. I can honestly say this is one of the most exciting trailers I've ever seen in my entire life. You know that big banner that they've been promoting the game with since E3 where they keep adding characters as characters were announced? Well, now the banner is complete, save for Piranha Plant and any other DLC characters. So this commercial's angle is essentially taking us inside this picture so we can see all the action that's going on in the game. When I first watched it, I was just so enthralled that I didn't really notice the fact that it had no musical score. The sound design is on point, but by not adding music, Nintendo basically gave all the creative types on the internet an all-access pass to go hog wild adding their own musical interpretation to this commercial. And what a rabbit hole that was for me. I spent I think a few hours watching every different version I could of this and I don't know how this is, but every single song works with this trailer. Nintendo Wire's own Amiibo Jason did a version with Mortal Kombat. I'm a big Mortal Kombat fan, obviously. I'm a big Smash fan. So that crossover has a lot of appeal to me personally. There's two more I really want to highlight. My first favorite comes from the legendary rock band Queen using the track Don't Stop Me Now. I grew up on Queen's greatest hits, and there are so many lyrics that literally translate to what is happening on the screen that I can't help but believe that the editor of this commercial was listening to this track while he was cutting it. That's how good it matches. Another one I want to call your attention to is from Tiny Tim, living in the sunlight, loving in the moonlight. His high falsetto and warbling vibrato is just so incongruous with all the fighting that's going on in the commercial that it's poetic. It's poetic. I love it. So if you have both smash fever and a little bit of time to burn, go check these out. They're everywhere and they're awesome. And that wraps up another episode of Smash Ultimate Countdown. I want to thank you for hopping aboard this hype train with me, helping to smooth over that time between now and the time when the game releases on December 7th. It's really been a lot of fun for me to do this show, but we're not done yet. We've still got a few more weeks until the game's official release, so you can bet I'll be right back here with you. Now, next week is Thanksgiving, and I generally shoot this show on Thursdays and then pull an all-nighter to get it to you by Friday, but I'm not exactly sure how that's going to jive with the holiday, so we'll definitely get our counting in, but it might have to wait until the weekend. The best way to make sure you don't miss the episode is to subscribe to the channel and of course sign up for notifications and you'll be alerted the moment it goes live. Thanks to everybody who joined me in the chat. Thanks to all my Patreons. I love you guys. Hope you all have a very happy, safe, and blessed Thanksgiving. We'll see you next time. Thanks for playing.